Hello, everyone. Thank you for your interest in learning about applying machine learning to industrial OT and manufacturing. My name is Ben Hatsum, and I work in product marketing at Elastic, focused on machine learning. Today, I'm here with my colleague, Felix. Hey, I'm Felix Russell, and I'm working as solution architect at Elastic for, well, close on six years now. I help customers to apply analytics and machine learning in industrial IoT using Elastic many times already, so I hope I can uh, tell you something new today. Today, you'll learn about smart monitoring, which applies analytics and machine learning to monitoring industrial equipment and connected devices to anticipate and prevent failures, thus saving you operational cost. So Felix, what's different today in manufacturing and operating equipment? Oh, well, um, relying on manual operators like manufacturing used to 30 years ago is not the optimal solution, obviously. So with uh, digitization uh, taking over for the last 10 years, uh, well, much equipment has already been instrumented with sensors that provide operational data. In, and that's in real time. So further, um, furthermore, today we have many connected devices that are uh, in operation and they're sending data constantly uh, and again in real time. So smart monitoring and predictive maintenance lets you leverage those data and well get value out of this to finally improve your operations. That sounds great, but how do you do that actually? Uh, well, at a high level, we achieve this by applying data-driven approach. So we ingest operational sensor data into an analytic system like Elasticsearch and then we use it in analytics and model um, and, and, and machine learning models to automatically monitor the operations and extract insights about issues that can occur. So once you have identified the root cause, you can then adjust your process parameters or initiate actions like maintenance or resetting the electronic device when this is required and when this is a well viable solution, of course. So we mine real-time operational data for insights and actions that optimize the operation. But how can you implement that in Elastic? Elastic supports the uh, complete process for that. So the, the first thing we need to do is to enable the connectivity. So that means connecting to the sensors and to the devices that you would like to collect data from. So sensor data, can be really different. So it can uh, can um, be real-time protocols like MPTT and OPC UA. It could be uh, a PLC that you would like to access directly. So there are many ways to collect data from, uh, from those different protocols. And at the end, there's also, uh, it's also necessary to collect log data and um, other application, IT application related data that is important for your monitoring process um, for, for your overall monitoring of the um, production processes. From that point, you can send the data to Elasticsearch directly and already start with the analysis. However, in some use cases, you may want to overcome network boundaries or you need to transform the data into the right shape or you want to enrich the data with, let's say, geo information. Then you can do this with Logstash. So Logstash is an open source ETL tool that is also developed by Elastic. And we uh, use this tool really to optimize the data and bring the data into the right shape to be able to analyze it in a later step. All the data that is stored on Elasticsearch can then be used to visually analyze the data. So we use Kibana to access the data that is stored on Elasticsearch. And then we build monitoring dashboards and um, other analytics capabilities that is based on Kibana and, and use this to really uh, find the insights within your data. But that's not all you can do with Kibana and Elasticsearch. Of course, you can also apply unsupervised uh, machine learning models, um, mainly to detect anomalies, use pre-configured um, observability rules to receive automated alerts and then uh, detect possible system issues. And last but not least, we can also drill down into the root cause or drill down to the root cause to, um, by, by inspecting the related data. So this means that we drill down more deeper and deeper into the data to be able to uh, find what is um, by root causing your, your current issue. And we also build supervised condition machine learning models based on the data 
that are able to characterize the status of your uh, key system components. That was a really good overview, how you do that. Thank you, Felix. And instead of only talking about that, let's see it in action with the context of managing power generation and consumption um, demos that, that we have in place. Okay, so now let's have a look into a wind turbine energy production itself. So we collect the data from uh, all the wind turbines here in Germany. Uh, at least all the ones where we can get uh, data from it. You see, we have quite a, a few of them. And there's also a red one, a red cluster here in the middle. We can have a look into that in a second. However, we also collect data uh, about the, the, the region where the data is coming from, about the owners, about whether they are running or not. We can see the power production over time. So a lot of important information um, for our wind turbine energy production, of course, because um, weather is important for, uh, for, for wind turbines. We also observe the weather conditions here. And now we see, for example, in the regions where I live, we only have a few clouds. We have uh, quite good weather here with 16 degrees Celsius and a uh, quite clear sky. And now let's have a look into, uh, into this broken cluster here. So what we can do, we can uh, just use elastic to, for example, um, draw a shape here around this specific um, issue. So something like this. And now uh, everything is filtered down to this specific area. And we can um, just zoom a little into that area. We see, uh, for example, there are some issues over here and we just zoom into that. And then what we can do is we click on this um, specific uh, wind turbine that has an issue. And then we click on the technical details and we get all the uh, information we need to um, well, learn more about what is happening at this specific machine. So we don't have any anomalies here for this machine. That's why we got this uh, little issue here. Uh, let's have a deeper look. Um, and we can also see temperature on this specific um, generator part here. We can see the vibrations, also what is min, max, average, and current value. So we learn a lot just by looking into the data that we got from the Elastic Stack. We even can get a logs collected from the specific machine and learn um, what is what has happened in the past. We now see that there is no output and there is no log, so it looks like uh, the, the the thing is just offline and um, somebody needs to go to the wind turbine and activate it again. So this is something we cannot do um, from from a remote connection just because there is no remote connection anymore. However, we can get the sensor data still. All right. Well, here we have seen smart monitoring applied to management of electric grids. What other use cases lend themselves to this approach? Other parts are um, maybe to have a deeper look into the factory processes itself. So let's uh, think about shop floor monitoring, uh, where we um, look at each and each single sensor with, within the uh, manufacturing process collect the data from all the various sensors and bring them into context. So maybe showing the, uh, having a look at the machine itself and then uh, looking at the sensor data that is produced by this specific machine. And that's in real time. Of course, we can also uh, use this to optimize the automation or maybe optimize the, the energy management within the factory so that you maybe can decide to uh, put a machine into a hibernate modus if you see that this is not currently uh, used or that if, if you compare it with your uh, ERP system that is giving you data uh, about the upcoming orders, then you can decide to put a machine into hi a hibernate modus, which helps to uh, save energy, for example. Other use cases are to optimize uh, supply chain management. So by observing the uh, trucks that are um, running around or by um, getting information about when things are get delivered to you and when you have to deliver it to the next um, part of the supply chain. This can help to, to optimize uh, all your um, processes that are taking place to produce your products or to that, the, that um, help you to produce the end product finally. And last but not least, as you have seen in the demo, Elastic is also a great place to analyze uh, any kind of data that, that we put in. So it might be energy data, it might be sensor data, it might be log data, but at the end, what you need to do is to um, visualize the data or make it available for people who may not understand the raw data itself. And that can be done with Kibana and it, it 
and its advanced um, data visualization, visualization capabilities. Oh, wow. Well, that's a really broad range of applications. But, well, why exactly is Elastic a good fit to implement smart monitoring and preventive maintenance? Um, that's a very good question. Um, so there are a couple of things that apply to that. So we can take the data, visualize it, analyze it, add machine learning, um, have interactive and analytic sessions, and all of that within a single tool. So you don't need to jump back and forth between different tools. You do all of that in a single tool. And this single tool called the Elastic Stack is also coming with an enterprise solution for end for endpoint and uh, and CM security. And we know that data that is stored in uh, in a manufacturing environment is highly sensitive because it's uh, it's your uh, intellectual property, it's your data, it's part of your um, daily business, right? And we won't want to uh, get this stolen from the system. So that's why. Um, we have a really high relationship to to store the data securely on the system. And last but not least, um, the, the system can also scale based on your demand. So um, usually our customers start small by implementing a single use case with, with just a few gigabytes of data uh, and adding value to that, with, maybe with a single machine or with a single production process. And um, then... So this only takes a small amount or a small set setup of Elasticsearch. And over the time, we add more and more use cases or we add more customers to the same use case. We add more different data sources to extend what is happening within the Elastic Stack. And then the Elastic Stack can scale based on that demand, very flexible uh, depending on what you as a customer would like to do. And that finally also is lowering the TCO and well, we all want to have a low TCO, right? Of course, yes. Well, I get it. Uh, so a very comprehensive set of tools, broad range of machine learning approaches, in, and also solutions for security, and all that in one platform. So you can consolidate your tools and save costs that way. Great. Don't take my word that this approach delivers results. For example, our customer Tracto who specializes in underground drilling rigs that let you install pipes and cables below the surface without having to open up sidewalks and streets, which is very disruptive. They use this approach to implement smart monitoring and optimize operations of those drilling rigs, like adapting them to varying surface conditions. I hope you found this video useful. Ready to learn more? Here are some resources. First, you can read the full story of Tracto in the customer sections of our website. Or watch a full-length webinar on how to apply predictive maintenance in Elastic at ela.st slash ml in IIoT. Or check out the manufacturing page in the industry section of our website. Ready to take the next step and engage? You can get your hands on the machine beat connector that allows you to ingest data from MQTT or UPC UA at the GitHub repo shown here. Or ask your questions in our discussion forum and use the tag predictive analytics. Finally, if you don't have access to Elastic yet, sign up for our free 14 day trial. Thank you for your attention and have a good day.